college buddy. And I'd stay on his couch. I'd go to these conferences. And that's when I started meeting people like Victor Nino. I started meeting people like Danny Morrell. Yep. I started meeting people like Juan Martinez. Although he was around the corner, I spent more time with him at these national conferences. So you start to talk to these guys that know how to grow and scale a business. Mm -hmm. And so... You Hey brother, How's welcome. It going? going well, going well. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Um, for those of you who don't know, this is actually my whole team leader, Rick Ruiz. He's over at GK Properties. Um, a few things about him: um, top sales manager in Las Vegas, top fifty realtor, twenty nine to be exact, and former NAREP president. Um, I'll tell you what, man, your accolade, your accolades are amazing for any realtor, anyone that's just you know aspiring to be in the industry. Crazy. So. That being said, I wanted to bring you on here because um, our audience, you know, they're requesting somebody big time. I was like, there's nobody bigger than my old <laughs> team leader. <laughs> Been in the industry for a long time. What, 20 years. 20 years. Yeah. Um, so let me ask you, did, did you start off um, right out of high school or, or what happened? No, so my journey into the industry, um, like most of us, we backed into it somehow, right? I, um, I majored in finance um, in college and I got a minor in real estate. Um, I had to work two, three jobs to get to school, so I wasn't about to take weight training as an elective or anything <laughs> silly like that. I had to get my money's worth. Yeah. So I took um, all the real estate courses as electives and ended up getting a minor in it. Um, and But when I graduated college, it was three months um, after the dot-com bubble burst. Wow. So my goal was to be a financial advisor, you know, work for either like a Merrill Lynch or at the time Payne Weber was probably the one recruiting me the, the, the most. Um, but that career kind of disappeared. I mean, similar to what we saw in the real estate crash, you know, 15 years ago. I used to go visit my buddy who was an intern at Merrill Lynch. Um, he's actually a mortgage broker now, um, Kevin Holmes. And I used to go and see him, and there'd be a zoo. Phones ringing, people going everywhere, files in hands, going bananas. By the time school was about to end, there was three people in an office. That was probably 10,000 square feet. Wow. And so obviously what I had went to study for, that industry was decimated for the time being. Um, and so I took a quick pause and I taught high school economics for one year. Okay. Um, and then I decided if I was going to make a living at it, I was going to have to get a master's. So the game plan was teach at high school during the day, teach two junior college classes at night, you know, between, you know, maybe make 50 during the day, 50 at night, make a decent living. Um, so that's what got me to Las Vegas is I came to UNLV to get my master's in, in economics. Um, and since I had most of my uh, classes done for real estate. I went to local real estate school, which is literally a block away. It was Key Realty. I was running an apartment on Flamingo and Pecos. Oh, okay. oh, yeah. That's where I went to school, too. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Most of us, half of the so industry. There. So went there. I just had to take the state class because that was the only class I hadn't taken was Nevada Law. Took that, took the test, passed. Um, and I joined a team that was at Key, and that's how I got started. And, you know, this, this, this industry goes. I started out doing real estate part-time, and, you know, that turned into 60 hours a week real quick. And... I didn't finish my master's degree. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so did you ever finish your master's or no? Did not. Did never went back. Did All not. right, so master's degree dropout, no it's, big deal. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to put it that way. Bro. No, I'm just kidding. No, that, that's it. awesome. I mean, well, you got to think about it. Some of the top people ever, right? Zuckerberg, sure. he never finished at Harvard, right? And now he's what? Multi-billion <laughs> yeah. dollar owner. So that that's pretty cool, man. Um, so you, you, I didn't realize you started at Key. So you went mm -hmm. to Key Real Estate. You were on a team. And how I, long did you do that for? I joined Michael Robinson's team there, who was a licensee, but he was only in industry to run his personal business. Okay. Him and his father would flip four, five, six homes a month back then. Wow. And because, you know, the, the demographics in Vegas being what they are, they, they would do a lot of homes in, near the downtown area, on the east side, southeast, et cetera. They would get all these sign calls. So he's yeah. like, hey, man, I, I got these houses that I'm flipping. People call me on them, either A, I can't talk to them, or B, I don't want to. Like, yeah. I'm not in this business to sell real estate. I'm in it to, to run my business, flip properties, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So, like, I started off my business between putting the yard signs in the yard on his listings um, and doing open houses on those listings. And then in order to drive open houses on those listings, this wasn't like today. You, you didn't put it on the MLS and Zillow, Redfin, Trulia, et cetera, drove traffic to it in realtor.com. Right. What I had to do is I would run ads in the Las Vegas Review Journal newspaper 
to drive traffic to the open houses. Wow. So that was before the internet. So <laughs> I'd run ads, drive traffic to the open houses, and then get, get belly to belly people that way. And that's basically how I built my business for the first, you know, five, 10 years. Got you. So you get belly to belly by putting your ads in the, in the review journal. Mm-hmm. And this was what, early 2000s? This was 2003. Wow. Four, five, six, seven, all the way up until the crash. Yeah. Because yeah. I remember, I, just pe- speaking to people that were around between 2000 and 2008, they talked about the massive um, inflation and appreciation that happened mm-hmm. during that time. Yeah. So you you um you you were to take advantage of a lot of that stuff. That's awesome. Yeah. So you stayed at you were with Ro- the Robinson team at Key Realty. Mm-hmm. Um, you were just taking sign calls. You put your ad in the art in the review journal, mm-hmm. and then what happened next? Um, so then we ended up opening our own firm uh, with oh, wow. Michael. Yeah, Michael opened up Robinson Realty, which is still there. They have a huge footprint in the property management space. But um, So went and opened up that shop with him, and we were together for 16 years, and I've been in GK for the last four years. So my 20th career, I've been with two firms, both boutique, both you know local born and raised guys that yeah. you know, that know the town. All boutique, huh? Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm curious, what was your mindset when you first got in versus how it is now? Well, luckily, um, I got into sales at a very young age. My first job at 14 years of age was doing door-to-door candy sales. Can't. Candy sales. Yeah, I thought you were gonna say newspaper. So you no. sell what kind of candy? Uh, you would send. I would sell like these tins that have like you know cookies in them. Yeah. Um, and they had like decorative tins, like the presidents on them, or a certain landscape, or you name it. Um, they'd be like you know the, the, those uh, those things like you see from Hawaii, like those little chocolate custards with nuts oh, in them, yeah, things yeah. like that. So I would you'd go door to door, you'd sell these things for five bucks for everyone you sold, you got a dollar twenty five. You know, mm. so on a good Saturday, you know, you, you'd pound in some neighborhoods, you'd sell, you know, 40, 50 units, you're walking away with, you know, 40, 50, 60 bucks. You know what? Just thinking of math, and obviously, since I'm in the industry now, you're so you're making 25% off of yeah. the sale. Yeah. That's that's not bad. I it might. wasn't bad at all. It wasn't <laughs> bad at all. We'd get picked up in this big van and he'd drop us off and then he'd say, I'll meet you at this corner, you know, in an hour and, you know, we'd tally up. And so it wasn't, it wasn't really a, um, it wasn't really difficult for me. And, mm. and, I always was taught to dress for the job you want, not the one you have. Okay. So back in that day, there was a hundred agents at this office, and two of us would go to the office every day. Me and a guy named Brian Hartzell. He's he has a huge footprint with Key Realty Southwest here. Yeah. Still, he opened up his own firm and he does he does a lot of property management. And it was literally him and I, and I would just be there, you know, and I would I would I would prospect. I, I'd call. I'd watch what everybody else was doing. I, I'd ask everybody questions. You know, what well, you want to list for me? What did that look like? You know, I would just learn it all. And I would dress just like I am today. And I didn't know a soul in this town. And I didn't have a, a deal in the pipe. But I had always, um, I always knew. Just be around people. Watch it. Learn by osmosis. You know, I've, I've, I'm a quick learner. I'm willing to get in there and do it. Um, you know, and I had no issues with it. And there was some pressure, you know, because we had a young family. I had moved out here with my wife at the time. And we had a, a one-year-old and a four-year-old. And she's like, use your degree. You're not making any money. Use your degree. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm like... Trust yeah. the process. It'll be all right. Like, yeah. I can figure this thing out. I see people around here pulling up, you know, in really nice cars, you know, that I, they're no smarter than I am. I can figure this damn thing out. Yep. You know, and God God willing, I did. Yeah. Hey, God willing, man. Um, everything happens. Everything's possible through God. Absolutely. I, I, to- I totally believe that. Um, so you said something interesting that I wanted to expand upon. So you said through through osmosis, right? And I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a big believer of law of proximity, right? Mm-hmm. Just being around the right people, you, you adapt the right habits. Mm-hmm. So is there anybody in your career that you're like, man, because I was around this person or, you know, these few people, they really set my foundation and allowed me to grow? Early on, my first boss um, I uh, that I had, like, in a job job, um, I mean, I worked at a bank as a bank teller when I mm-hmm. first got into college. Um, and that was helpful just, just on getting dressed up, you know, just dressing up nice, looking the part, looking people in the eyes, shaking their hands. But then I did have a boss after that um, where I worked two jobs in college and I would do collections for a small alarm company. Matter of fact, he relocated and retired out here. Um, his name's John Becker. He, um, he owned his own business. And I just basically would watch, you know, a lot of the things that he would do. You know, it, wasn't, it didn't matter if it's a day off. If he even wore his jeans and he had a polo, he had his shirt tucked in. He presented himself well. He paid attention. He listened to people. He made people feel like they're mad and they were listened to, you know, and that really helped a lot, you know, with sales where you just kind of learn to slow down once you get one on one like we are now. Look people in the eye, talk to them. Yeah. And again, the door to door sales helped because that allowed me repetition, rejection, you know, not getting attached to the outcome, knowing that it's just a numbers game. It's a contact sport. Yeah. And then the professionalism between working in the bank, but then watching John operate. 
um, you know, his business lead a team of techs, his sales team, and then he also had his admin. You know, so you watch a lot of these small habits and you watch um, how certain people do things and they carry themselves. And, you know, you like I've always said, you know, be a vulture, you know. You go, you see something, get off a little white meat, leave the rest behind. And everywhere <laughs> you go, you'll learn a little bit from somebody. Yeah. You'll learn a little bit from somebody and you'll end up building a skill set or some habits that, you know, when it all comes together, you know, you'll get you it'll get you some places. Yeah. I you know, it's funny, um one of my buddies, Victor Nino you know, in in Austin. I love Victor. Victor, yeah, yeah. Victor's awesome. He's he's uh he's probably not rep out there. Mm -hmm. He's um he top not rep person as well. One of his habits, and every time I'm around him, whenever we go to conferences together, he always talks about. Well, he I, he's always learning. Whether mm -hmm. you've done two deals in the room mm -hmm. or you're at a thousand, ten thousand deals, he's always learning and growing. Mm -hmm. And that that's such a, a skill that um, you, you gotta you gotta let your ego down. And mm -hmm. a lot of people will not be be humble enough or let their ego down to to learn. But the more the thing we gotta realize is. Our business grows to the extent that we do. Mm -hmm. So the minute we stop growing, our business stops growing. Yep. So it, it's it, that's super crucial. I just wanted to point that out. No, I love Nino and his brother, Lino, the Nino brothers. Yeah. Yeah, they've, I've known them for, shoot, probably, I don't know, a good 10, 12 years from going to conferences. And yeah, mm -hmm. those are solid guys. Yeah. And he's well, always reading a book. Always reading yeah. a book. It's always journaling. He does his, does his thing. That's right. We're, we're, we actually, when we were in Orlando earlier this year, we actually read um, Who Not How. Oh, I'm listening to that as we speak. That is that book is yeah. money. Yeah, if you good. really want to scale, that that book is yeah. money. But either way, um, moving on. So you you talked about being a vulture and learning from other people. So what habits do you really have now? They're like, hey, these are my prime habits. This is why I'm successful now. I read a book. Um, well, along the way, you know, it was the simple principles of you know how they say eighty five percent of success is showing up. Yeah, there's a lot to that. You know, and I learned that even when I wasn't doing any business, I would show up, I would dress up, I would shave, you know, had cologne on, look like you would think I had four appointments that day. Yeah. Showing up, it's not just means you're there. It means you're present. It means you're, you're focused. It means you're available. You know, like I, I always like the term and I tell you this all the time, your favorite, your best ability is availability. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. A, I do a lot of transactions. You know, I've got an appointment that I booked at five that came in at about you know 130 and i'm like i gotta get out i gotta run across town at, two, <laughs> at 215 to meet richard yeah but i made it happen moved some things around you know but again what we know is that almost 70 percent of people will work with the realtor they met first mm -hmm. so to me speed to lead and being available is critical yeah. you know because who else is this person likely to meet with at on a friday evening not many in our industry most guys start shutting it down noon one two o'clock so I've got a high probability of getting this listing strictly because I made myself available same day at five o'clock on a Friday. Chances are by the time you meet with somebody, it's going to be there tomorrow Monday. That you know, it's funny. Um, I have a similar story to that right now. Well, so I met this woman. I think it was like late last year. Um, I called her during the day. She's like, "Hey, can you meet me later?" I met her, took her listing, and she just hit me up now, like um, eight months later. She's like, "Hey, I have four more that I need to take care of." Beautiful. And all because I did speed to lead that mm -hmm. day, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And that's a, that's a, a great principle, yeah. speed to lead yeah. and making sure that, that you show up and being available. Yeah. So, that's so, super so that principle of just showing up being 85% uh, of success yep. um, and, like I said, being available, um, but also, too, um, following through. You know, following through when you're in today's day and age, you're, 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 you're constantly communicating, whether it's phone, by text or email. People say a lot, they promise a lot. Everybody walks in your living room, they promise a lot. Again, following through is so simple. Like it's 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 not even so much a business practice as it is so much a life habit. Is 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 do what you're gonna say and say what you're gonna do. You know, and that alone will get you a really long way because unfortunately most people don't follow through. Most people have opportunities, they squander them, they they delay, um, and they just simply don't follow through. So to be to be a person that that's accountable and reliable, available. And reliable I mean will get you 95% of success I mean those simple habits and then I read a book that um, so I've gone through coaching right my first yeah. coach my first coaching um, program was Buffini loved it great principles there yep person you know get personal meet people we're actually doing a client event tomorrow um, which is very much a Buffini type uh, you know practice yep. then I went on to Mike Ferry and that was make more contacts yes. contact sport more volume more volume right um, but the big thing um, about that is I, is I incorporated that with a book called The One Thing. 
there's a book called The One Thing. I don't Not know if you've read Keller. it. Is it Gary Keller? Yeah. Really? Okay, so yeah, it's like what <laughs> one thing do I need to yep. do every day to keep this business going? Yep. And to me, that's simple. That's that's making contacts. You know, so at that point, between my Mike Ferry coach holding me accountable and the one thing, I got my contacts up, you know, to about 80 to 120 per day when before they were more around the 40 to 50. Yeah. You know, sure enough, and then my business doubled accordingly, you know, and then learning how to delegate and relying on support staff yeah. uh, to do some of the things that aren't what we call money-making activities, right? And I train my agents and I, and I bought into the fact that there's three things that we should be doing. We should be contacting people, getting in front of people, and writing contracts. That's yeah. it. Everything else, someone else should be able to do for you. One hundred percent. It's so funny. Like I'm gonna show you. It's in my office. I literally have. Have I finished my one thing today? Mm, nice. And I look at it, and just to hit back on, um, you you talked about saying what you mean and, and doing what you say. Mm -hmm. I have a quote that that sits here because this is where I prospect that says, "Don't allow your don't allow your actions to betray your words." I love it. Literally, love I, it. that's my fourth quarter motto. Beautiful. It, when I go to the gym, same thing, right? Yeah. I'm like, shit, if I say I'm going to go to the gym, I need to go to the gym yeah. because somebody is listening to me or somebody heard me say something yeah. and I better freaking do it or else they're going to call me out on it. Okay. There's nothing worse than being called out on your, on your actions, right? Well, and even words. then, you, you got you to gotta look at yourself in the mirror every day yep. and you got to go to bed at peace at night. I, I have a story right now, literally right now, that I, I, I heard this morning when it mm -hmm. was Kobe Bryant and it was he was saying, I don't, I don't negotiate with myself. And Kobe was saying... You know, I told myself I wouldn't leave the gym until this, or I told myself I'd be at the gym. He goes, and I and your voice in your head says, you know what, you can skip a day. He goes, I do not negotiate with myself, and I don't negotiate with myself. I have my days crossed off that I'm not taking that, that I'm not taking calls, that I'm not working, that I'm not going anywhere, that I'm not yep. booking appointments. I've got those; they're on the calendar. I book them out in advance, but and I don't negotiate with myself there either. Yep. If there's somebody that wants to meet, wonderful. I have support. I have teammates. I have people that can help them that are just as skilled as I am. So just the same way that I don't negotiate with myself on things that I need to do during business hours, I also now have learned to not negotiate with myself when it's non-business hours. 100%, because whatever you whatever you say whatever you say yes to, you're saying no to something else. Mm -hmm. Super important principle that I he I've heard a lot throughout this year. Yeah, so that, that's really good stuff. Um, man, that's a, that's a lot of, I feel like it's a lot of good value and mindset, <laughs> and like I just love it because I know me, people like me and you, we listen to this stuff daily, mm -hmm. right? I've heard that, that Kobe video, mm -hmm. and Man, that mamba mentality, mm -hmm. I don't negotiate, right? Mm -hmm. I don't negotiate with myself. Whatever I say I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it, mm -hmm. right? So nobody can judge you on your character because your yeah. character is everything, yeah. right? Being consistent, very important. Um, because consistency is more important than talent, right? Yeah, well, 1,000 percent. Yeah, and that's why you said that, well, earlier you were saying that these people aren't smarter than you. You'll figure it out mm -hmm. because you. we already know you're gonna be consistent. That's it. You talked about having two jobs, right? Yeah. We know you're gonna make it happen. So that being said, what what was your big break, right? Was there a point where, man, in 2008 this happened and now I'm going from two deals to 20 deals or, or whatever My it was? My big break, I think, um, was my willingness to not give up. Okay. Um, so fast forward, built a great business, I'm 28, 29 years old. I've got six, six single family residences, two apartment buildings sitting on plenty of money, investments are doing good, everything's doing good. You know, the perfect storm comes of the Great Recession, property values drop, stock market drops, um, income drops, you know, and you fast forward, man, I got down to 2,500 bucks. Mm. You know what I mean? I had to short sell my house, moved into one of my rentals, et cetera, et cetera. You know, a lot of stories that you hear about people that have been in the industry during that time. Um, and my willingness to be like, I'll figure it out. There's always work. I've never, I've always come from an abundant mindset to be like, I don't care. Even like right now, transactions are down 40%, what have you, 50% doesn't matter. Like, I don't care if there's three people selling real estate in this town, I'll be one of them, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I'm hungrier than you. Yeah, you know? are, exactly. Are you gonna participate in a recession or not? Exactly. <laughs> and so at that time, obviously REO, REO um, became a thing. I applied absolutely everywhere. Landed two small accounts, so I did have two servicing accounts where I would um, sell assets on behalf of um, asset management companies. Um, so they weren't, you know, you got to realize I, I wasn't a big guy on the block. You know, you, you had your Noah Herreras out there and your Juan Martinez's and your Steve Hawks's and they were getting the boatload of them at the time, Michael Cry and all these guys. So I was a small fish, Yeah. you know, and it was a company out of Colorado and one out of Salt Lake. So I would get the entry level houses on the east side Spanish speaking communities. These houses, you, I mean, it's hard to, to fathom now, but they were going for 30000 a piece. 
forty thousand a piece, sixty thousand a piece. <laughs> but they were transactions. I was keeping the lights on. I was working. I, and then again, this is a very synergetic business. You know, I'd I'd go from, you know, coming into an office and literally me and you know a couple partners of mine at the time, Martin and and, and my cousin Isidro. I mean, we would literally start some of our days praying because we really needed to pray and hope that we could put food on the table that day because yeah. it was literally that difficult. And so we at least we're doing transactions. And once you start getting some momentum, like you've got some things to do, you've got some houses to show. By then, now the internet, Realtor.com, was kind of off and running. They were kind of the big platform at the time. This was pre-Zillow. So now at least you're getting inquiries from all over the country because now I've got these listings that are 30,000, 40,000, 50,000, which are very attractive. I don't care where you live. This is a major international travel hub and you've got properties you can that are available for 40, 50, 60, 80,000. So that is when I really started to, to, to utilize systems, use internet lead gen, um, you know, started to gather, build a database, started building my business and it was slow and then there was a lot of short sales as well and that's where I really found my niche. That's where I really found my niche and, and, and funny is most of those short sales, obviously some of those did come from clients and referrals and stuff, their, their family was in trouble, like hey, what do we do, we're underwater, we don't wanna get foreclosed on, we don't wanna get sued, we don't want collections, what have you. I would say a good 50%, if not slightly more, of the short sale listings that I got were from other realtors, and not only in my office, but from other offices, mostly from other offices, because they didn't want to deal with it. This was probably a six to nine month transaction, a lot of back and forth with the bank, like you're talking about fax machines, having to fax in financials. Oh, so again, a lot of people didn't want to deal with this, and I and I'm, but to me, I'm like, you know, like I, I think we're blessed to, in this industry and working in a white collar um, industry anywhere. The fact that you know, uh, my son humbles me all the time when I'll he'll hear me complain about something. He's like, Dad, those are those are first world problems, and he's right because he he studied yeah. abroad in Mexico for a year and he got humbled real quick. So to me, I mean, and I look at other agents, like you're not willing to send emails, faxes, and make phone calls to follow up on a couple thousand bucks. You know, yeah, it's not a $400,000 sale because now houses are worth 80,000. Now they're starting to go up a little bit, 100,000, 120,000, 150,000. And they require a lot of legwork. But to me, I'm like, I'm sitting at a desk. Like, really? Yeah. So yeah. again, you start piling these up and now you're starting to do volume. And then what happens again, realtor.com's around, the internet's starting to grow. Now you're getting a lot of buyer side traffic a lot of investors and that's how I was able to build my property management business because who's calling on properties that are 30, 40, 50, 60, 80,000, these are investors are looking to build rental portfolios. So I did that and I helped people build rental portfolios and started managing them. So now I'm getting, I'm starting to generate some income on the sales and now I'm starting to build some residual income and built my management portfolio to about 100 properties. So now that's a residual uh, revenue stream that to this day, you know, is fruitful. Yep. So that is what's kind of the break is when the market was in the gutter and people were running out, I wasn't gonna let go. I'm like, I had I had by that point been in the industry now, you know, seven, eight, nine years. I knew it pretty well. And I knew that despite having a degree or what have you, I knew that I could not go somewhere else and and have an income that way and have yeah. a command of my day, do what I wanted, not miss my son's, uh, um, you know, uh, ceremony at school not miss a ball game not miss a you know a tournament on the weekends you know i i was like there's no other industry that's going to allow me to do what i do and make what i make you know it's because at that point you're you're five years removed from college six years seven years removed from college you're a dinosaur yeah. you no longer are sought after to to <laughs> to do yeah. that job you know so at that point i was kind of between and again i really like the industry mm -hmm. and again like i did day one i said i'm gonna figure this out short sales foreclosures i don't care I'm here to stay. Yeah, yeah. That that's um. Those are all important habits that you just that you just displayed. You know your consistency and your your willingness not to give up your fortitude. Um, it's funny when they when the recession happens, they say that that's when a huge wealth transfers, and that's basically what happened, right? It's like mm -hmm. now you have such market share and mind share mm -hmm. with these different communities, and especially the the property management having a hundred. Well, hundred accounts, mm -hmm. that's good money, mm -hmm. you know, and that and that's pretty consistent because not like, you know, you're gonna lose a hundred, you're not gonna lose a hundred at a time, right? Sure. And you you can pretty much fluctuate. Like, hey, well, you know what? Twenty fell off, so let me go get another twenty. Yeah. So that that's really good. And like anything else, every yard sign is a phone call. Yeah. You know that. 
that tenant you help move into a house eventually becomes a buyer. Yep. You know, and everything else. And most investors want to buy more properties over time. Mm -hmm. And eventually they got to sell it. So again, it, it just gives you this core of clients that you can service and that they end up referring you people from other states. They refer people from in here, you name it. Tenants to start referring you business. You start taking good care of them. You know, and all of a sudden they're like, you know what, you've been a great landlord to us. You've always fixed things. You've never, you know, given us a hard time. We've been a couple of days late. And all of a sudden, like, we're looking to buy a house. Can you help us with that? Absolutely. Yep. There you go. That That's such a great funnel and pipeline um, there. And have you read The Millionaire Real Estate uh, Investor? No. So I, I think that's a really good one. It, it, it's written by Gary Keller as well. And um, it, it teaches your clients how to work with a real truth to invest. Nice. So I think that would be a good one for you guys watching as well. Um, so really good stuff. Uh, that's a really cool way where where um, you leveled up. Was there any other level ups you would say that happened after that um, during that time that were exponential? The next one. The next one. I think the next big help is becoming a Zillow Premier agent. Mm -hmm. um, because again, then the internet started getting big. I think I, I joined. I started paying for zip code ad space in about 2012. Mm -hmm. um, so now all of a sudden, business is growing a little bit. I'm back on my feet again. Um, things are going well. I'm starting to be able to invest back into the business, and that's when Zillow was early on, and I was a very early adopter. You know, so to this day, I'm a, now. This is probably year ten or eleven wow. of being a Zillow Premier agent. But at the time, um, you know, it was the new hot thing. So now I started buying ad space in about three or four zip codes in town, and that really helped me level up. Well, what I'm just curious. So, what were you? Do you remember what you were spending at that time? Because I, know I now think I started nice. off with like I don't know, like four hundred dollars in like eight nine one four seven. Wow. Yeah, I think I started off with, and I was, and I got calls the it's day a good one. Zip code. It was a great zip code, and I got, I got, and I, and I got calls day one. I'm like, oh my god, bang! And and a lot of people, you know, everybody has their opinions on, um, and and I invite especially you early, um, both you early realtors and you late stubborn ones that don't like the tech and don't like the. Yeah. The um, you know the the big eight hundred pound gorillas that are taking over the space. In my opinion, at that time, I'm like, well, am I going to spend tens of thousands of dollars to build a world class website, and then I got to spend tens of thousands of dollars on Google to drive traffic to that website, and mm -hmm. then I got to continue to have it optimized. Yeah. So I'm like, to me, I'd rather pay to have somebody else do it, drive the traffic, and now I'm doing what I do best: taking phone calls, making appointments, writing contracts. Yeah, you're, you're leveraging it, right? Hundred percent. Same. It's just, just another form of leverage. One hundred percent. And and um and I invite you guys uh to, to adopt that mindset. I'm actually gonna be speaking on it um next month. Let me pull up the date. But we're gonna be doing an iBuyer panel. Yeah. Um on uh November the 9th. And we're going to be talking about that. There's a lot of resistance awesome. to the tech, the, the tech space and, and the big, you know, the big web portals. But at the end of the day, that was my next it, it leap where I was like, oh, wow, I was able to gather internet leads all over town, convert those into buyers. Now they started doing the online reviews. This is before Yelp got popular and Google didn't even have reviews. So Zillow was the first people to actually have a platform where people can post reviews. Mm -hmm. And so now all of a sudden, I'm getting business from them. I'm paying for it nonetheless, but they're helping me build my online brand. Yeah. Now when people start to go look for you, they start to see your Zillow profile, how many reviews, how many past sales. Now all of a sudden I start building an online brand and some reputation that's really helping me. So that was the next phase of leveling up. So it wasn't this huge explosion. There was all these steps along the way and all of them had to do with me being in the space. Even when the market was down and I, and I went six months without selling a single property, I still went to work every single day dressed exactly the way I am right now, knowing that I would, there's real low chance that I would have an appointment today or take a phone call inbound. Yeah. Didn't matter. Along the way, I was, I was going to be on the field when somebody threw the ball so I can catch it. you damn right. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. We, they might have ran the ball <laughs> yep. you know, for three straight quarters, but I'm still there in the fourth quarter. If you need to throw the ball, I'm there to catch it. And so that was the next step, you know, it was, was online um, ad space through Zillow. Yep. And then after that, um, was I, one thing you talk about a lot is mindset, scale, and learning to actually treat this like a business. Mm -hmm. That's when uh, I started to become a high performing realtor. I was probably anywhere between top one, two, or three percent in Las Vegas. And this is when NAREP started to get big. And so I was recognized nationally as a top 250 agent in the country as a Latino. And they were really trying to push attendance and try to grow their events. Yeah. So I would get comp the tickets to go to their, their NAREB National Conference. And they were holding it at um, at the JW Marriott in downtown live right across from Staples Center 
for about the next three years. And so I would, I'd make the trip, you know, again, I still had a young family there, you know, money was still, you know, a conversation. Business was going well, but you know, I wasn't gonna be, I wasn't hopping on planes and, you know, and, and renting a suite. Yeah. So I would drive out there, I'd stay with my college buddy and I'd stay on his couch, I'd go to these conferences. And that's when I started meeting people like Victor Nino. I started meeting people like Danny Morrell. Yep. I started meeting people like Juan Martinez, although he was around the corner, I spent more time with him at these national conferences. So you start to talk to these guys that know how to grow and scale a business. Mm -hmm. And so you start making these connections and they have these wonderful breakout sessions that now I'm taking that back to Las Vegas on how their practices are. And I just became a learn it all. And I became uh, very um, intentional about making sure that I went outside of Las Vegas at least twice a year to a national conference to learn skill sets, to learn what books to read, to learn even uh, my listing presentation, scripts, you name it. All of these things I got from outside of Las Vegas. Like like I said, I worked at boutique brokerages. Those things didn't exist. Yep. They, I brought them back from these conferences. And so I would go across the country for, you know, since then until now, learning these things and bringing them back into my business and, and uh, applying them, but then also teaching them. Yeah. I mean, all of that is, I mean, I've learned over that the last few years, right? Um, I know during COVID, that's when I started coaching with Danny. Mm -hmm. And one of the first lessons was you can either accept or you can adapt, mm -hmm. which you did in 08, right? And you yep. still do to this time by going yep. to these conferences and yep. learning. Um, from the masterminds, right? You said the breakout sessions. Mm -hmm. that, the breakout sessions are money. That's where you learn. That's, that's when you get into the nuts and bolts. That's when, and and I, that's what I love about this industry, both locally and nationally. You know, we're sort of we're, we're quote unquote competitors, but there's never been an an instance where I've approached somebody, like I said, locally or nationally, where I've asked for feedback and they had no problem. Like, come on into my office, come shadow, come watch. Here's the system I use. Here's the software I use. Here's the, you name it. You mm -hmm. know, and that's what I love about our industry is that. Even though we're quote unquote competitors, there's, there's you know people in town I can call it a day that would help me um, navigate through my business and grow. There, there's no resistance to helping other people grow, and I love that about this industry. Yeah, I mean we're everyone who's at least headed towards the top, top maybe let's just say top five percent. They all they all have abundance mindsets. Mm -hmm. we're, none of us think in scarcity for the most part. Mm -hmm. We're all thinking, man, how do we grow? Who's yep. that person that I need to meet, and mm -hmm. what's the questions that I need to ask? Because yep. the power is in the questions. It's mm -hmm. not in what I tell you, it's what I ask for you, right? That's it. Um, so, good stuff. So, now you're, this is big time. So, now you're a sales manager for basically, I think, the number one team in Vegas, and then you run your own team. So, you're a sales manager, you're, that team does 500 deals. Your personal team does, what, over 200 deals as well? Right about there, 197 right about there. last year. 197, you, you might do a little bit more, a little less, but you're right there. So, 700 deals are, you're in control of, essentially, right? Tell me about that. I mean, uh, first of all, you know, I got to give credit You're where credit's due. Yeah. The, the the big team, you know, that's it's a three-headed monster. It's myself, yep. you know, Heather Barrera and George Kiprio's GK. Um, that's a big team effort. It's yep. a beautiful thing. There's synergy. Um, so that. But then my personal team, yeah, there's five of us. You were, you were a part of it yep. and did great success there and came on to lead your own team. And so, yeah, that that's really the, 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 the kind of keep up with me. Yep. You know, it's a different thing. We're over here. It's a lot of coaching. It's a lot of mentoring. It's a lot of, a lot of steps. A mm -hmm. lot of getting people from like A to Z. Yeah. We're over here. You've been there with me. Yeah. You know, it's hey, we're gonna lock the door <laughs> and keep up with me. Let's and, be, to work. and even if you don't, you're gonna be fine. <laughs> yep. Even you know, even just that that practice. So yeah. So no, I'm I'm very proud. Thanks for thanks for mentioning that when we were getting ready and you're going over these things. I I, I just I move forward. Yeah. So I really don't always take the time to kind of, you know, tally all this up. But when you say it, yeah, that those are some big numbers. And so, yeah, we've been blessed um, uh, over with the with the with the Kiprios team. Um, you know, our goal is 50 a month. You know, we yeah. fall short sometimes. But at the end of the day, like you say, it's about 500 transactions, um, you know, you know, in a year. And, it, and it's it's very humbling to be able to bless other people uh, to help them make a living, to help them learn a business, to help them run a business, to help them grow a business. Mm -hmm. And then all the ancillary supporting staff that were able to, you know, help put food on the table. So that's a blessing all the way across the board. Um, my small team is, um, you know, I have my admin, but then there's the five of us. Then when we go and we go hard, yeah. you know? And so, yeah, no, it's, um, and that's one thing, um, that I have learned. Um, you know, some people, you know, I was on my way here pivoting to an appointment, Getting down here on time, and sure enough, made it on time. I, I'm very, very um, intentional about being on time, not wasting people's time. And so, um, you know, 100% is possible 100% of the time. 
you know, and, and it all comes down to this thing. It's the calendar. You know, people yeah. are like, what are you doing tomorrow? I don't know. Let me see. If it's not on my calendar, it's not going to get done. Yeah. And and that's all there is to it. And you time block. That was another thing that I learned early on from people at these conferences. It's like, you know what you're going to do when you're going to do it. And you can get it all in because you know how it is. It's a, it's a, you're getting out of town, right? Let's just say you're taking the family to Disneyland and you're driving out on Friday. So you're leaving here. You're supposed to leave here at 12, be on the road by 2, mm -hmm. right? You better believe that in that 8 to 12, you always get done what you need to get done. 100%. You always do. So if you, so I don't care if you've got two hours to get something done, you'll get it done. So that's the importance of a calendar and an organized week is to have it all in there. Because if you allow, you, you wouldn't have blocked out that time if it wasn't enough time to get that task done. Yeah. So a properly done um, calendar and task will get it done. So now, um, I, my, my big intention now is to start creating more uh, space in my life for personal time. You know, my kids are grown now. My youngest just graduated high school and they're all adults. I'm going to be a grandfather next month. And so now I'm learning to work smarter, not harder. And I'm and I'm I'm just I'm doing the same amount of business um, as I did last year at a faster velocity. Right. So now I did in nine months what I did all of last year. Personally, you know, the team, the team numbers are down a little bit because of transactions. But nonetheless, my days are a lot shorter. Now I'm done by 430 and on, and on, on Fridays. I'm usually done by like 2 or 2.30. Mm -hmm. And every other Friday, I'll do a three-day weekend. So now I'm able to do the same in less amount of time by delegating, by leaning on support, um, and just kind of learning how to do things, letting go of this illusion called control, which yeah. none of us have but Nobody God. Nobody has control. So yeah. let it go. <laughs> you know, so that's helped me a lot. And so I know a lot of people talk about mind space in these books and that book. And don't get me wrong, I'm a listener. I was leading to a book um, here, and I'll be listening to a book on my way out. The biggest, my biggest learning was just to hold space for to let things happen mm -hmm. you know if you do the right things and you come from a right space it's going to get filled with good things yeah and, and and you and you've been there before uh with me and you probably give me some feedback where i was very attached to doing things a certain way you were and so i'm <laughs> learning to kind of let a lot of that go and and, yeah. and my goal for this year was to do away with resistance okay just do away with resistance because i know if i come from a place of contribution um and I do the right things, I get up every day, exercise, I read, I pray, show up and dress up. The space is now open for good things to happen and it will get filled with good things. So I don't need to worry about shoving them in there and then creating this overwhelm that all that, that makes us sick, naturally. You know, just just plain and simple. It makes us sick. It, 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 it's what the leading cause in death in America is now stress. And I'm not a stressed person, but yeah. nonetheless, I'm not Superman either. I, mm -hmm. I'm, and that's to say I'm immune to it. Yeah. You know, whether in fact, I, just because the results of that doesn't mean that you're you're causing, you're not causing damage in the process. So that's kind of my, been my intention for this year and, and it's been very effective. Yeah. Um, so kind of to recap that, um, something that I love to live by, and I've heard it from a lot of preachings, right? Um, when you receive a lot of blessings and you, you hold on to them, you there's there's no more room for more so you mm -hmm. have to give them away Amen. just how you said right um so you want to be a river not a reservoir um and just to make it simple the more you give the more you grow absolutely and it, it's such a simple concept right like oh what do you mean if you give you grow mm -hmm. how does that work if i give this job to someone else it gives me time to focus on my one thing mm -hmm. right yeah and then with your calendar you talked about you're doing less in you're doing more with less time. Mm -hmm. And that's just choosing to be more purposeful. That's it. Right? Versus being like, they talk about it with Keller Williams. There's the entrepreneur approach and then there's her purposeful approach. It, it's, we call it the six perspectives. But essentially, when you become super purposeful, you can dive deep into every hour. And what do I need to, what do I need to make happen? Right? That's the big thing that, that's the big shift that you've started to make. And I'm, it's funny, like just watching you, because you're still growing, right? Well, like, we, I hope so. We're all still growing, Absolutely. right? And just seeing where you were to where you are now, it, it's amazing. I was like, man, when's he gonna make that decision to let this stuff go so he right. can grow? Yeah. So it, it's it's super awesome. Um, so there's two more things I wanted to get 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 with you. Um, is there any lead gen tactics that you'd be like, hey, this is what the realtors should be doing right now? Well, here's the beauty of. Um, the, the state of the industry yeah. is that the internet rules. Yeah. The internet rules so you can come in as a brand new agent and start spending online and, and have an immediate presence. And furthermore, like what I like to teach um, 
newer agents as well, especially of the younger ones, because they were born with these. Yeah. They grew up on social media. Um, and they have, it's funny, I always use the example of Back to the Future, yeah. uh, part one, where he's talking to him, he's like, you have a, a portable movie studio, <laughs> you know? It, you know, when he's looking at right. the video camera, and that's what this is. Yeah. You know, when I, when I started to grow my business, like, you know, some of the phase two, probably year three, four, five, I was spending money on um, Spanish TV. I would I would be on commercials yeah. during the news, and it was expensive, you know? It was a couple thousand bucks. It was a lot for a 25-year-old kid, 26-year-old kid. Um, and, you know, people still go to the bathroom during the thing, so there's no guarantees, right? Yeah. And so now what we know is that 85% of America has one news source, and that news source is Facebook. Yep. And so now you literally are on every commercial you want to be on for free. You know, so that's why we all get taught video is king, content is king, consistency is king. Just be on there, stay on there, and you're going to drive traffic. So for, for newer agents that perhaps may not have the budget to be able to go online and be real intentional about whether it's spending on Zillow, whether it's spending on Google pay-per-click, whether it's, you know, spending on banner ads or commercials that still work or billboards or things like that, you have a portable movie studio in your hand <laughs> and you basically have free commercials. Literally. And the people that are that are watching already know you love, you trust you. They had they accepted a friend request or you did from them. So there was an intentional, you might not know them very well, yeah. but at the end of the day, you have an audience yeah. and it's free. Mm -hmm. and, and you can choose to be on a commercial any chance you like. So yeah. for the newer agents, where most of your listeners, followers, classmates, teammates, friends, what have you, they're going to be on the social. I know, you know, between the TikTok and Instagram, whatever you want to be on, you have a free space to run commercials on infinite, mm -hmm. right? So that's a gift. Yep. You know, and then for the others, you know, I'm all for, like I said, spending money on Zillow, spending money on Google. You know, spending money on every legion that gets thrown at you. You know, there's nothing I will not try for six months. I get these these sales calls all the time. I'm sure you do too. Yep. And and then I'll listen to it. You know, I'll take those ten minutes. I'll listen to it, and if it's worth it, I'll I'll try it for six months. I'll try anything for six months. Mm -hmm. uh, what I always tell people when they're hesitant to spend on um, on advertising, like I think there's an in and out right on this this exit, right? Yeah. And so there's an in and out billboard. You know, they probably pay twenty five hundred dollars a month for that billboard. Mm -hmm. They probably have to sell a thousand cheeseburgers <laughs> or a hundred. No, a thousand, a right? Thousand. A thousand cheeseburgers to break even on that. Yeah. The good thing about our industry, if you were paying for that same billboard, yeah. you'd have to sell a third of a house. Yeah. To to pay for that. Mm -hmm. So if that if you just sold one house on that building for ninety days, you would not lose money. It yeah. might not have been the best resource for yourself. But as long as you sell one house from that billboard in 90 days, you at least did not lose. Yep. And you picked up some miles on your credit card. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, I will try anything for six months and see how it goes. And I have underestimated some lead generation sources and I've overestimated some lead generation sources. Yeah. But the beauty of our industry, because of the, of the, the revenue potential, is that you don't, you, you don't have to be uber successful at least to at least find out and and you know find out that it may work or may not work yeah. you know, even a loss might be a, a good loss because you might either made a little bit of money or you learned something either on your back end of your systems or processes or what didn't work yeah th that's that's definitely one of the important things is you know you say six months I know some people look, like to look at their lead pillars every 90 days sure so that that's really good analogy right if as long as I get one sale every every three months I'm good or yeah. every four months um, so you're ec you're an economics major. You've been in the industry for 20 years. What do you think about current state of the market and where it's going? Well, let's face it. I mean, the writing's on the wall. Interest rates, you know, were the showstopper. Yep. Um, every economics uh, economic economist that I talk to, lenders that are very you know watching the bond market on a daily basis, watching the stock market, how they all relate and correlate. You know, it's all in agreement that it's probably going to get worse before it gets better. Yep. You know, and so again. Um, like I've always been grassroots. This is a contact sport. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody that I talk to, the 80 people that I that I talk to today, weren't looking to buy a house today. Maybe five of them were looking to buy or sell a house. The rest of them were, you know, kind of keeping in contact, building relationships, maintaining relationships, etc. So we expect it to get worse before it gets better. Um, frankly, I would like the word recession to be used more regularly. Yeah. Because let's face it. If, if you're gonna throw the word out there, by definition, we did have back-to-back -back quarters of, of GDP contraction. We did. So, you know, it was very minimal, and, and on the on the good part, the jobs market's doing well. The, the Q2 GDP numbers weren't that bad. Q3 weren't that bad, but technically, 
If you want to act like it, it, it's almost like they're not using the word properly. By definition, we're in a recession. Yeah. But they don't want to use the word because things aren't grave. And at the end of the day, so we're in a recession. Let's deal with it. Because yeah. the moment that we start to acknowledge that we are in a recession and it's going to get worse before it gets better, the more pressure gets put on the Federal Reserve, you know, to curtail the interest rate increases. Yeah. Because so much dominoes from home ownership. You know, I'm sure sales are down at Home Depot. I'm sure sales are down at Star Nursery. You know, when people aren't buying and selling properties, they're not, you know, feeding these ancillary businesses. So I would love for them to just call the call the kettle black and say, we're in a recession. Let's put a little pressure on the, on the Federal Reserve to stop raising interest rates because they, they did it too much too quick. You know, yeah. they waited too long and then they tried to do too much too quick and now we're seeing the results of that. So it's gonna get worse before it gets better. There's always opportunity. You know, at the end of the day, we are in housing, which on Maslow's hierarchy of need is right near the top, yeah. you know, as far as, as um, you know, having shelter. So at the end of the day, there is going to be work out there. We're going to have to work a little bit harder, a little bit smarter, you know, to, to be one of those few people that are getting transactions on a regular basis. But to those seasoned vets, they don't worry about it. We've seen this before. Mm -hmm. You know, we it hopefully have learned from, you know, the... Um, the first crash and the first recession that when you know volume slows down good that's why you don't live outside of your means you know and that's one other thing that i really credit um narep for instilling principles in me is one of their one of their um their narep 10 you know i carry it around in my pocket uh, because it's a um it, it's it's their, their principles that i believe everybody should follow and one of them is um live live within your means uh, yeah do i have it or not not i might it might be in my other wallet but anyway, one of them is live within your means. Yeah. Live within your means. And another one is invest in real estate. You are you are a professional. You're an expert in this profession. You should be one of the first ones to be able to take advantage of opportunities. Yeah. And right now, when you start to see the market soften and you start to see opportunities come across your desk, be the first one to be able to jump at those mm -hmm. because you're going to thank yourself 5, 10, 15 years later. Yep. That's good stuff, man. Yeah, I, I think as well the market is gonna get worse before it gets better. And and them increasing it so fast, my, my biggest thing is how fast they increased it, if they met if they keep going too much, then we're gonna start needing government assistance again like we did need in COVID. And Very then well we're gonna be. we're gonna play that same cycle again. Very well could be. So that's the only thing I'm worried about with what they're what's going on right now. So we're hoping we get they get that right. Um, obviously we can't predict anything, right? Because government does what they want. That being said, so you were your top sales manager in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. top what top fifty realtor number twenty nine, now rep president. You've done so much, and you help a lot of people. What's your why? My why, um, you know what I, I wish I was that deep, but like many, um, growing up broke. It just is a, such a driver. Yeah. You know, we would meet eat meat twice a week. You know, had a couple pairs of pants, and you'd have to make it work. Yeah. Um. It was. It was that I am not. I'm not. I choose to not live this way. <laughs> you know. That's why I started yeah. working at 14 years of of age. That's why some days I'd work on Saturdays umpiring baseball games when I was in high school, and I'd, I'd literally work for the first game to the last game, and some days I'd make more than my mom. You mm -hmm. know. And I just refused to have those conversations. I remember my mom asking my mother. Um you know, for this or that, or to go here or go there. And she just would frankly and honestly say, there's no money for that, we can't do it. It's not yeah. an option, not a possibility. And it didn't disappoint me, because I never had it, so I didn't miss it, but I know that I wanted certain things. And I knew um, becoming a father really changed everything. Really, that that kind of became my why when I, when I started to bear children and raise children, that I did not want to look them in the eye and say no. Yeah, I would hate for my child to get in like the school of their dreams and say, we can't do it. Or say, hey, I I made this awesome team. I got I made all stars, but there's travel involved, and I need to be able to do this or that. And say, good job, but we can't do it. <laughs> yeah. So I think that was probably the biggest why was being able to provide for my children and being able to give them the life that I dreamed of. And and it wasn't about them doing what I wanted them to do because I couldn't do it. It was giving them the option. Yeah. You know, not not picking, not making their choices for them, but giving them as many choices as possible. Yeah, that's super fair. Um, I, I can definitely relate to that. I, I hate, I well, I just like ever saying no to anyone. Like, I, mm -hmm. my wife wants something, the kids want something, right? It, it might not be right now, but 
Will we figure a way? Absolutely, one hundred percent. We'll find a way for yeah. it to happen. Absolutely. If this if this dream is important enough to you, we will definitely make it happen. So that being said, I know we're getting short on time. Um, let, let's leave it with this. Oh, actually, one last thing I wanted to point out. Um, one of my favorite things about you is what you've done with Yvette. You've taken her from a, a starter agent to within what within two years, she was top twenty five women in real estate, right? Yeah, back to back top one percent. Back to back top one percent. So that's a huge accomplishment, and that's something I, I really admire you. I'm like, man, I, w- I want some of my team members to to you know model what Yvette did. That's that's huge. So congrats, good stuff, good stuff on that. Um, that being said, all right, before we get out of here, what's a book that you'd recommend for everyone to read? A book, first and foremost, is the Four Agreements. Yeah, the Four Agreements I read every year. And it's simple principles, right? I mean, again, we were we read books. Yeah. You, you probably read a new book every month, every and month. we can go yeah. on and on. But to start off, and, and I was a late adapter to reading. You know, I would always listen to the books. To this day, I, 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 I listen. I don't read um, yeah. on paper. I listen in the car. I'll listen while I'm walking, running, or just even going about my day. But to me, the simple starting off, if you're going to start reading books or if you need something to get you grounded, um, is the Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz? Okay. Um, and it's just these four simple principles that will apply and will help you with your daily life, whether it's business, relationship, community, what have you. And number one is be impeccable with your word. Yeah. We talked about it earlier. Say what you're going to do, do what you're going to say. Yep. The fact that you follow through is going to separate you from most people out there. Mm-hmm. Number two, and it's very important in our industry, is don't take anything personal. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought up Yvette because it's taken a lot of training for her to deal with rejection and getting fired. And I mean, and, and, and part of this business, if you're not if you're not prepared to get fired from time to time, you're in the wrong industry. Yeah. So don't take things personal. It was huge for me because it, it's hard not to. It is. And especially when it's just two people involved in a situation and you got to understand not to take things personal. Don't get me wrong. Be accountable. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day sometimes just aren't meant to work out and some opportunities aren't there for you but at the end of the day do not take things personal because you will get stuck number three is don't make assumptions communication is everything and I've been guilty of this one up until recently you know it happens all the time we're all human that's why I read this book every every year because you assume because someone says this or because someone didn't reply or because someone didn't call back or because someone didn't this that or the other that it's about you you know, it's almost like number two and three are the same. Yeah. Because you're taking it personally, you're making assumptions about what's <laughs> going on that's not happening. Yeah. Right? Yep. And number four, simply always do your best. Always do your best. Mm-hmm. You know, we were talking about earlier about you having that, you know, accountability where I, I don't want to I don't want to get called out. Well, more importantly, you don't want to call yourself out. Yeah. You know, you don't want to negotiate with yourself. Always do your best. If you say you're going to do something, do your best because at the end of the day, you only have to close your eyes and there's only one person in your mind talking and that's yourself. And if you can't go to bed at night at peace, then... You know, what are we doing this for? Yeah, 100%. I mean, you might not always have the best situation, but you can always do your best. Mm-hmm. So that that's totally true. And points two and three, right? We got to take ownership, right? We yeah. can't play the victim. No matter what it is, things can happen to us or we can make things happen. That's right. Both, both, um, both options, we always got to take accountability. Um, so that being said, if you guys like what you heard, like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next episode. Later. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Good job, man. Oh, thanks, that was man. awesome. That was-